Barahini. Joined now by Espandiar Barahini of Forbes. He is doing us Toronto Raptors coverage for the Alley Oop, man. Really, really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, let's talk Raptors. And, and one of the reasons why I want to have you on, man, it is a very interesting time because OG was traded right after we did our last check in. And then <laughs> lo and behold, Pascal Siakam, who we talked about ad nauseum, gets yeah. traded to it's I don't think it's the order and like really the the thought that we had like going into that particular check in. And so I think it caught a lot of people by surprise. Yeah, it definitely did. Uh, I even when we first did the pod, I, I was like, I would be very surprised if OG gets traded. That was my firm and hard stance. And then two days later, he gets moved They're They're clearly um, maybe there wasn't, you know, eye to eye seeing when it comes to the contract negotiations and extension this summer. That's probably what led the Raptors to take that more serious. And then, you know, it led to a trade for Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett, who have gotten off to good starts as Raptors so far. And like, it's been a shaky, rocky road. They just lost by 40 to the Pelicans. Like it was, it's been some rough basketball here, but you know, they've, they've entered this new era now uh, with much more clarity. And when you have clarity, sometimes it's not good to, to, to start out, but at least it's a vision. At, At least there is something there that you can hang your hat on long term. So yeah, and, and that's really that's the Raptors long term, man, is is Scotty Barnes. Like Scotty yeah. Barnes has continued to prove through all of this that he's still the guy that you want to build around. He's still the guy that you can hang your hat on and say, you know what, at least we've got this guy. And we we've talked about this. With this is now our third check in and we did a, a preseason uh pod about this as well. Like Scotty yeah. Barnes is gonna be around for a long time and he's a lot of fun to watch. And there's so many different ways that they can go as he continues to develop. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the Scotty Barnes era looks like in Toronto. And I'm sure that like everybody there is excited too. Excited is a good way to put it because I think when you have a, a clear sense of direction and a player like Scotty who has, uh, you know, this untapped potential tantalizing skill, you don't really know what his, the final version of what Scotty is going to look like will be. There's just so much, there's such a high ceiling there for what the type of player that he can be. Um, right. And and I think that brings a level of excitement, but it also brings a little bit of anxiety to the fan base because yeah. now it's like whenever there are moments that Scotty doesn't reach those expectations, that doesn't get to that point where, you know, he, he had a great game uh, against the, the Thunder to start and then in the fourth quarter and overtime sort of disappeared. But again, that hasn't been the case usually. He has been a dominant fourth quarter player near the top of the league when it comes to fourth quarter scoring, but just had an off night and the fan base just exploded. They're like, Scotty is this and we can't do this and not. not. And so when when he fails to meet those expectations, there will be that, I guess, pushback. But that comes with the territory of trying to become a superstar in this league, right? Absolutely. It's a... And the, the the most important thing to remember for everybody is development is never linear. Yeah. You're always going to have the ups and downs. And as long as the general trajectory keeps pointing upward, like you can at least hang your hat on the fact that, look, this is a, is a guy who is still locked in for a long time. And, and you can still find other ways to create some good opportunities for oh, yeah. other players within that system. And that kind of brings me to some of the new guys, obviously, that the main names being Emmanuel Quickly, R.J. Barrett. And Bruce Brown, the three, I'd say, main trade pieces brought back in the OG and Pascal trades. Yeah. How have they fit into the new situation? I know it's a lot to take in over the course of a short amount of time. Yeah, um, I mean, on the IQ and RJ front, I thought I think they've been excellent so far. Um, IQ is learning what it takes to become a starting point guard in this league, and mm. that's never an easy transition for any player that is not an easy transition and so there have been moments where even tonight against the pelicans where the ball was sticking a little bit he wasn't making the read quick enough he wasn't moving the ball quick enough and you know those are some of the humps the hurdles that he's going to have to go across to be able to become a starting point guard an efficient starting point guard in this league but the scoring pops off the charts the off ball movement the off ball shooting is something that really helps this team and you can see it pairing well with Scotty Barnes in the future as for R.J. Barrett, um, you know, I, I think it, he's been a pleasant surprise. Many people expected R.J. to be this sort of, you know, rotational player, but he's really helped uplift their offense. Battering mm-hmm. Ram, getting to the rim, becoming this secondary playmaker. R.J. has 
maybe played the best basketball of his career in the first in month as a Raptor. Uh, will that stick? Will that, you know, intuitiveness, his ability to get to a bucket, um, will that sustain? I guess that's the lifelong question with a player like RJ Barrett. So we'll see. We'll see how it, it kind of shakes out. But um, for the Bruce Brown part, it's kind of tough to assess because, and and look, you're, you're a Nuggets guy, so you know, um, Bruce was so vital to that Nuggets team last season because plug and play next to tons of talent. He just plays so well off of those guys. The cutting, the ability to be a secondary ball handler. He was hitting his shots at a great rate last season. Um, great point of attack defender too. And I think he works really well in the context of a good team. When he yeah. has talent around him, he's able to roam to be this, you know, sort of fifth option on the floor that can kind of hunt for, I guess, the the ancillary things on the floor, right? Rebounding, diving for the ball, et cetera. Um, that hasn't necessarily happened in Toronto. And I think part of that is he understands that this is a transition right here, and he probably is going to get moved at the trade deadline in a couple of days. And you don't see him necessarily fitting in with a team that has aspirations of rebuilding, being younger, headed towards the lottery. It's just, it's a bad fit, but yeah. he's a good player, obviously, you know? Yeah, that's, I think that's a, a salient point for sure that for a team that's still trying to figure out their infrastructure, he's probably not going to be able to adapt his game to that infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, he's still trying to figure out exactly how he fits into that. And uh, that's a, that's a tough place for, for any role player to be really. There's somebody that is, understanding of what's supposed to happen versus what should happen. And like losing is yeah. obviously going to affect that too. So, uh, and it, it's been a lot of losing like last 14 games, Toronto's now two and 12. It's gotta be like, it's, it's never fun, but like uh, you can still kind of hang your hat on. Like I talked about the, the different aspects of the team as they continue to learn and go through these growing pains and just understanding how it's going to look. Uh, Grady Dix played a little bit more. Some other guys off the bench seem to have pl playing a little bit more. Some of the young guys, what, what can you tell us about how the rotation has really shifted for a rebuilding situation? They're definitely going younger. Uh, Grady Dick had his career high tonight, uh, 21 points, I believe against the Pelicans. He's stacked together a lot of really good games in this nice. month. Um, just playing more often, getting more opportunity. He's been going back and forth between the Raptors and the Raptors 905, their G League affiliate just getting more reps, getting more minutes. Uh, one thing was the cardio with him and improving how he's able to run around on the floor. That's obviously super important for a movement shooter like Brady. Um, and so you see that comfortability growing with a guy like that, a young player like that. Um, yeah, they're going younger. They're, they are playing some of their younger players. They even, um, hey, another Nuggets relationship here, but they uh, they brought Jante Porter, brother of Michael Porter Jr., uh, one of their two-way <laughs> players. He was playing pretty consistent minutes for them at the back of five, started in place of Jakob Pertl for a significant stretch there too. So he's shown some flashes. Maybe he becomes a long-term factor here, maybe a couple of years here in Toronto. Who knows? It would be awesome to see that happen. Uh, Jordan Wara has had some opportunity here with the Raptors as well. So they're giving a shot to some of these younger guys that might be able to turn into something here with the Raptors. But for the most part, the focus is on obviously the core three IQ, Scotty, and RJ now. It's cool that it's become that though. Like that's like if if those guys had not played well initially in this situation, I have to imagine that there would be a lot more panic. There would be a lot more sure. widespread uh sort of cynicism about where the direction is going. But it still seems like the next version of this team uh can include those guys. It can yeah. include an RJ Barrett, who I'm I'm not sure we thought like like he may not have been the right fit at that point, but now it seems like he, he looks great. He's playing great. Yeah. Uh now like Emmanuel quickly, like he's a guy that makes a lot of sense. And I think the way I identified would, would make a lot of sense as a as kind of a a Scotty Barnes partner in crime because he doesn't have to have the ball the entire time as a point guard. But he's got to do some point guard things. He's got to space the floor, and he does those things really well. Um, right. What are some other things you're kind of taking away from the the next version of this team and, and what it's got to look like around Scotty? It's an interesting concept, man, because there are so many things that depend on what Scotty turns into as well. He's still no. trying to figure out his game, too. So 
it's sort of like silly putty in the sense that you can shape into whatever you expect to happen in the next five years or whatever. Uh, and so it's hard to determine right now what the ideal type of fit and team around Scotty Barnes is. But, you know, from a base level, a lot of shooting, a lot of secondary creation, guys who are able to be quick and get downhill. And so, you know, RJ and IQ sort of fit that build. Um, you need still more shooting and that's where Grady Dick pops in and well, <laughs> well, you know, uh, great, you know, Grady is able to play more minutes and, you know, I Inserts think he's right plays, into that lineup. It, it, you know, Hey, it was, the, <laughs> it was bound to happen at some point. Um, and so Grady is going to be able to play more minutes and, and sort of be an important part of this team. It's about finding guys who can really accentuate some of the strengths of Scotty, which is he is great at bulldozing into traffic, getting to the rim, finishing at the rim. Uh, he's an excellent post player. He's also a guy who's been working on his catch and shoot three, great off ball cutter, great roller. Like these are the skills that Scotty Barnes has. How are you going to find guys that, and obviously the passing, the playmaking is, is everything that he does. So how are you going to find guys to accentuate those strengths? Um, that's the key when it comes to building around Scotty Barnes. Do you think the team needs a floor spacing five or can they get away with a rim rolling five? Somebody that doesn't really space from beyond the arc. With Pascal gone, it's easier now to do that okay. because you don't have as clunky of a fit in your front court with three guys who are like kind of shaky shooters, right? Scotty is improving as a shooter, but defenses still aren't entirely trusting him or respecting him with that shot. They're still giving him that look pretty frequently. And so the spacing was always going to be clunky with him, Jakob, and Pascal on the floor. Removing Pascal from that equation, throwing in uh, IQ, who is a 40% pull-up shooter, it changes things for that dynamic. Um, and I think it becomes more tangible to play with a guy like Jakob Hurdle. Also, Jakob's screening ability has been super important for not only Scotty, but for IQ. These sure. guys who yeah. don't necessarily have the separation or the, 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 the ability to create separation on their shots, Jakob's screens are really helping them get that little bit more of a pocket to get their shot off. Uh, and so it's sort of like Jaw Morant and Steven Adams with the Grizzlies, you know, Jaw sure. and Steven Adams is such an important part of Jaw's game and vice versa. It's, it's, it's kind of symbiotic in that nature. So yeah, I think Jakob is, is sort of super important for the short term future of this team. Interesting to think about because we, we talked about that, whether that shaped the future of the, the team, that particular yeah. deal that they signed him to him and they trade. It to did, man. Contract. It really did. It like, it's, it's dictating a lot of the moves that they have done. Um, you know, even the fact that they got to the situation with Pascal, I don't want to say all of it was part of the Jakob thing, but it did that sort of created the ripple effect that led yeah. to the Pascal Siakam trade. Um, and now, you know, with the the pick in the window and you're kind of wondering, well, you know, they're, they're in six thoughts right now. So if they were to stay and retain the sixth pick, they would, keep this pick and then it would be a top six protected pick for San Antonio in 2025. So they're doing, they're playing that game right now too, which yeah. is not a great place to be. Um, and yeah, they gotta, they gotta figure that out. But that's the Jakob deal is, is dictating a lot of what they're doing right now. Masai is probably like two and 12 sick. Let's go. That's perfectly <laughs> fine. We're, we're so excited for you guys. You keep, keep getting that development in. That's yeah. uh that's awesome. Well, I mean, I mean, look, to be fair, RJ Barrett missed tonight with injury management for his knee. Mm. Uh, Gary Trent jr. Sat out for the second half with lower back tightness. Mm. Uh, so there, I, I'm not, I don't want, I don't think there they is were like already a full, down, like, you so know, yeah. yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. yeah. They were already down 20, but <laughs> I don't think there's a full tank job happening here, but I, I, I assume that's in the back of their minds, you know? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it, it's completely fair. And like they, they should do what is best for their team. And like, kind of like what Dallas did last year, they ended up with Derek Lively the second, like that yeah. worked out for them. That was a good idea. And they, that for was, sure. that was the right thing for their team, despite the fact that it was kind of icky in the moment. So yeah. it's okay. I, I'm not worried about it. Um, last couple of things for you. Bruce Brown likely to be rerouted. That seems like a not a foregone conclusion, but something that everybody would kind of like to have happen that makes sense for the team. What's that yep. what's that gonna be like? And what are the goals for this team heading into the trade deadline? 
it would be nice for them to get a youngish player in return for Bruce Brown. I would be surprised though. I think they probably just settle on getting a first um, of some sorts to add to their treasure trove of, of chess. And I can't even, I can't even call it treasure trove of picks because that Yaka Pirtle deal is sort of hanging over their head. But um, yeah, just a pick would probably be the deal here for Bruce Brown. And I can see it happening in the next couple of days. Uh, also, Gary Trent Jr., unrestricted free agent. Maybe there's a team that's willing to pay him this summer. I don't think the Raptors are going to be that team, so I'd imagine he gets moved. Uh, Chris Boucher has one year left on his contract after this, but still like a good, solid rotational player that can help a playoff team potentially. Uh, maybe Otto Porter Jr., another unrestricted free agent this summer, hasn't really played, has been unhealthy the last two years with the Raptors. But again, maybe... That $8 million salary is snug for a team to kind of acquire. Maybe the Nuggets are like, hey, we need an auto right. quarter junior, right? Um, <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, it would be great, right? A- additional rotation piece right there. So those love those are the types of players you're probably looking at for, for the Raptors and if they might move off of those guys. Would be surprised if Dennis Schroeder gets involved in any talks. Would be pretty surprised if Yaka Pertle were involved in any talks. It would have to be a pretty... Um, pretty big offer i think or like a, a an offer they can't refuse when it comes to those players to get moved okay well i'm excited to see it man it should be very interesting let's yeah. let's see if they make a couple major trades immediately after immediately after we record it should be should be <laughs> yeah, they're, fascinating, they're gonna so. trade rj barrett for now or whatever yeah <laughs> but yeah. my goal is so we're recording this at 8 44 p.m mountain time as long as the trade doesn't happen before 10 a.m mountain time on tuesday <laughs> then we should be just fine. So oh, man. we'll see what happens. But hey, uh, Esfandi, I really appreciate you stopping by, man. He is Esfandi Arbarahini of Forbes. Make sure to go check out all of his writing and all the sideline and, and in-person work that he does over the camera. Seeing, yeah. seeing Esfandi in some commercials down here in the <laughs> state. So like pretty cool to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, yeah, of course. Enjoy, man. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you for having me as always, man. Of course. Of course.